Welcome back to Treadman, everybody. Um, kind of a weird little episode. I've never done one of these before, but um, for those of you who've been following the show for the last couple of weeks or so, will know that I finally pulled the trigger and ordered the Baronius Press Breviatum Romanum. Um, little kind of an expensive <laughs> little gift to myself for Christmas, I guess. Um, but um, I said I'd do an unboxing video when it came in. Well, it finally showed up. And here's the, the box, okay? And I know we get some stuff in here, so I figured we'd just take it apart here on the show and see what all we got here. Now, I saved a little bit of money here when I bought mine. If you go to Baronius Press, and I'll, I'll include a, the link to their site on the on the breviary I'm on them. Um, in the description, I found it difficult to complete the purchase on their site. Something about the way my credit card and, and their website, they just, they weren't talking to each other very well or something. And I just kept rejecting the purchase called my bank, asked if there was a problem with the card. And they said, no, the problem's on their end. They have no phone number to get a hold of whatever. So I ended up having to go through eBay to find a complete, New Breviatum Romanum, Baronius Press. On Baronius Press's website, it's listed at $399. On eBay, I got it for $325. Saved a little bit of money, and I was able to complete the purchase, and they were able to send it to me brand new, um, so it's not used or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. So let's take a look at what all comes in this box. All right, so first off the bat, I see... Learning to Pray, the Traditional Breviary, an explanation of the code of rubrics for the traditional 1961 Breviatum Romanum, being that promulgated by Samorum Pontificum, by Bernard A. Hausman, S.J. Somebody says there's no good Jesuits out there. Take a look. Father Hausman, thank you for keeping the flame alive in the Society of Jesus. Um, I say that as a proud Loyola graduate. Go Ramblers. All right. Um, and then... Okay, now this is kind of interesting. Looks like these are some little booklets. One, two, three, four different little booklets that have, you know, some rubrics and some prayers on them. My guess is these are sort of like, uh, you know, the altar cards during the Mass, right? So these are going to be probably the prayers that you'll say all the time, repeatedly, just, you know, made in a handy little booklet format for quick access is what it looks like. And I'll, I'll open that up and we'll check it out here in a second. And then we get these three volumes. Okay. Roman Breviary, Breviatum Romanum. This edition is in Latin and English, by the way, if I didn't mention that already. Um, there is another edition that is all Latin. And I mean, all Latin, even the rubrics and the explanation of the rubrics are in Latin. Um, and I think it's a Benzinger press reprint, but it's usually for sale over on the society of St. Pius the 10th, uh, website, their publisher, Angelus press, but it's always out of stock. It's been out of stock I, for like years. I've never seen that back in stock. I don't know if they're even going to have it back in stock or if they just quit printing it or whatever. But, um, this one I really liked because a, you can get it B it's in Latin and English. And if you remember in the accompanying letter that accompanied some more in Pontificum, the letter to the bishops sort of explaining what the motu proprio, you know, how they, how the Holy Father wanted the bishops to implement the motu proprio. It does say that the, amongst the laity who are not obliged to pray the liturgy of the hours, but do so out of private devotion that they can pray the, they can pray even the traditional latin breviary in the vernacular and and that's perfectly fine um so there's a there's a rumor going on out there in the tratty catholic blogosphere that praying the uh, the breviarum romanum in the vernacular is a liturgical abuse and that is that is false that is false we have permission from the holy father uh, when the samorum pontificum was promulgated to uh to pray it in english if we want so that comes this now because it comes in latin and english it's, they're bigger volumes than they are in the benzinger press version and there's three volumes here 
versus only two volumes in the total in the whole Latin version. I hope that was clear. Sorry about that. Um, it comes in, looks like it's got this nice little hard case book sleeve that it comes in. You can kind of see that. Okay. So uh, when you're not using the other two volumes, because you'll only be using one volume, you know, in each liturgical, in the various liturgical seasons as you progress through the breviary, the other two volumes are stored in a nice protective case um, so they don't get, you know, damaged or whatever. And that's kind of nice. That's a nice little touch um, because, like we said, these are expensive. The idea here being that you only want to buy one of these in your entire life, <laughs> if that, right? Uh, and, oh, and, uh, you know, if you follow the show, you you know that you don't need any money to participate in the church's official prayer. DivinumOfficium.com has every traditional version of the Roman breviary going all the way back to, to before the Council of Trent, all the way up into and including the 1961 rubrics for free on your computer all year round. And I'll put a link to that again in the description where you can go and check that out. This is just, I bought this because I like to hold a book in my hand while I pray. Um, it's just a personal preference. It doesn't make me a better or worse person than anybody. It's just a personal preference. It is a more expensive preference because books are expensive. Um, but if you want to pray the Roman breviary, and I, I really do believe that every Catholic would benefit from some type of devotion to an approved form of praying the canonical hours. Um, I, I highly recommend you look into it. It's not very complicated. Um, it, it's a very simple prayer. Um, it sounds, I think it sounds a lot more, uh, you know, complicated or, um, unapproachable than it actually is. And I'll, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit as we go through this breviary. And here's finally our last book. There's nothing left in the box. Roman breviary volume one breviatum romanum so i'm gonna grab my handy dandy fourth degree sword of the knights of columbus letter opener um and let's see let's let's dig into this thing let's get the plastic off of here and open this bad boy up um 325 dollars got it off a of seller on ebay they shipped it USPS, so it took a little while to get here, but, um, you know, it arrived good condition, exactly what I ordered, and like I said, saved a few bucks because I, uh, you know, didn't go through the the uh, Benzinger website, not Benzinger, I'm sorry, Baronius Press. I didn't go through the Baronius Press website, which they had it at 400 so, okay, well, Nice volume, nice uh, gold leafing on the on the edges of the pages. You've seen the spine here, obviously, and then very nice touch on the uh, um, the IHS on the on the cover here. Um, this is a very beautiful, beautiful volume. Uh, it's got that sort of uh, uh, faux leather cover, right? Might be, might be real leather. I honestly don't know. Um, inside, it's got this nice little uh, pattern detailing here on the inside cover. And then, oh my goodness, this text is so beautiful. It's The text is, you can sort of see uh, red and black um, and nice engraving um, on the uh, top of the page here of the Agnus Dei. And, you know, if you have any, any liturgical books by Baronius Press, you're going to know what to expect here. They, they put out some really beautiful volumes. Um, and, you know, the, I won't read the entire introduction here, but it just says, the text of this edition is based upon the Hours of the Divine Office in English and Latin published by the Liturgical Press, Collegeville, in 1963, and has been thoroughly revised and updated in accordance with the Editio Typica of the 1961 Breviatum Romanum. And um, those, they put, there's a couple of notes in here about the English translation, which I, you know, you probably don't care that much about. Included in the introduction 
are the apostolic letters of Pope of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, uh, an apostolic letter of Pope Saint John the Twenty Third, general decrees, general rubrics, calendar of feasts, table of movable feasts, ta table of liturgical days, table of occurrence, table of concurrence, and I'm not going to go through all that stuff right now with you. I just kind of want to give you. And then there's the ordinary of the divine office for all the canonical hours, matins, louds, prime, tear, sex, non, vespers, and compline. Um, the Psalter of the Roman Brevia, it's all laid out here in a nice table of contents. And, oh goodness, this is so beautiful. And it's got these nice placeholder ribbons, okay, that make it easier to kind of flip through the book when you're uh, actually praying one of the hours. This is lovely. And my guess is that uh, we would be in volume one right now because we are in Advent. And by the way, we are in Advent. What am I doing here? Hang on one second, guys. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. There we go. We're in the second week of Advent. So <laughs> um, sorry about that. I, I wanted to have that up the whole time and I didn't think about it. It's an amateur hour production over here at Tradman. You guys are used to that. Um, but, you know, essentially, it's very nice here because it, the page is split, and I'll, I'll give you a sort of a look-see here. Uh, English on one side, Latin on the other. But the explanations of the rubrics and everything is all in English. So that helps a lot. And why 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 is it so if we're reading the explanations in english why do we want to read the prayers in latin latin is our liturgical language and this is something that goes back to uh the israelite religion back when you know we were we were uh, before we were redeemed by our lord um our lord god gave to the israelites the torah in a particular language Hebrew. And as a result of that, Hebrew is not the colloquial language of the Jewish religion. It's the sacred language. What they call in Hebrew, the, the Hebrew name for it is Lashana Kadush. It's the sacred language. There are um, Hasidic and Orthodox Jews who do not converse in Hebrew and will not learn modern Hebrew because they, they consider that sacrilegious. Um, and they will converse about topics like going to the grocery store or what I saw on TV last night or this, that, and the other thing in Yiddish or in English or in some other type of vernacular uh, language. But Hebrew is reserved because that's the language God gave the Torah in. That's not, that's that, that's not a language for talking about going to the grocery store. It's a sacred language. And so the Torah is reserved, the, the Hebrew is reserved for reading Torah, for, for praying the Psalms. And uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, if you've ever watched how Jews, when they read the Torah, they have a little stick with a, with a, a finger that points on the end. And that's what they use to go through the lines because you're not supposed to touch the words. You're not supposed to touch the words because that's the word of God. Now, that's just the word of God reduced to writing. It's not even the fullness of the logos, right? The fullness of the logos is the body of Christ, and him we're giving out in the hand. Figure that out. That you know They always talk about all this ecumenism and what we can learn from other religions. Well, here's one thing you can learn from another religion. Treat God like he's sacred. Treat his, his word and his logos like it's important because it is. It's more sacred than you can imagine. I don't know how I got off on that rant. Latin is our liturgical language, so we would say the prayers in Latin. Now, you don't have to. You can say the prayers in English um, and still get something out of it, still be a good Catholic. But to the extent you are able to, if you care about my recommendation, and not many, many people do, try to learn as much of the Latin as you can um, to, to say a little bit of our, our of our prayers in Latin. I think a lot of you guys probably do already say a lot of prayers in Latin. Um, but it's uh, it's I, I get a lot out of praying the office in Latin because it makes me slow down. 
I feel like I'm really participating in the liturgical life of the church by participating in not just the church's liturgy, but in her liturgical language also. Um, and if you are a Catholic from one of the other um, approved rites or churches, you may have a different liturgical language. Um, and so I would invite you to the extent you are able to learn some of the prayers in your liturgical language. Um, and there, I, I have a feeling that's probably more common in those other rites than it is in the Roman rite. I don't know, but um, this is a really beautiful, beautiful volume. And I'm really looking forward to digging into praying this version of the divine office. I have other versions that if you don't want to, and, and trust me, I get it. If you don't want to spend 400 on a copy of the Roman breviary, totally get it. This version right here, I think cost. I know it costs less than 20 bucks. It's, it compact. You see how big it is. Okay. It's put out by Angelus Press. The little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary is based on the rubrics of the Roman breviary, has a lot fewer moving parts. This It only comes in one book. All of the canonical hours are in here, Latin and English. All the rubrics are in English. This is a great, great little prayer book. If you've never, um, heard of it. It's a shorter version of the Roman breviary centered around devotion to our blessed lady. Included in this version is, as you can see here, the office of the dead, which is appropriate to be prayed on uh, days of burial of loved ones, friends, family, things like that, or a spiritual director that you know, or something, somebody you care about has recently died. You can pray the Office of the Dead for them. Office of the Dead is also appropriate to be prayed on the Feast of All Souls. And that, I believe there are special indulgences attached to that, but don't quote me on that, but you might want to go check it out and, and look into that. But this is a really great volume too. So if you don't want to spend the, um, the, the scratch on a $400 volume of the Broman Breviary. Totally get that. Totally makes sense. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more robust than the, than the office of the blessed Virgin Mary, but not quite as huge as the Roman Breviary. I also, there is, I also have, this is a great book. This is the monastic diurnal, uh, the day hours of the monastic Breviary in Latin and English. Okay, uh, I've got my missile cover on here, but um, and this is put out by St. Michael's Abbey Press. These monks are doing the Lord's work. This is now this is not all seven of the canonical hours. The, the office of Matins is not in this book. These are just the day hours. That's what diurnal means. So this starts from Louds to Compline. Okay. Um, but honestly, the, the reason why Matins is not included is most people will not pray Benedictine matins because the monastic office of matins is prayed at like three o'clock in the morning. And if you're like me, you're asleep at that time. So <laughs> um, the, the, the times of which you can pray um, matins is a little bit more um, defined in the monastic breviary than it is in the Roman breviary. In the Roman breviary, you can pray matins the night before you go to like right before you go to sleep, you can also pray matins and louds together the morning of that's a, that's perfectly fine. So if you know, you're up at like six o'clock in the morning and you want to pray matins and louds together, that's allowed. Um, but any time between those two is acceptable, a lot more versatility. And Oh, and by the way, when it comes to what time you pray, as a lay person, don't get too bogged down in, in that. If you sleep in late and you got up at eight o'clock in the morning instead of at six o'clock when you'd get when you scheduled to. So go ahead and make up. Go ahead and make up louds and 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 matins. As as lay people, we're not obliged um, to pray this prayer. So even if you can't do all of the canonical hours, and I don't pray all the canonical hours, I pray. You know, when I'm doing the Roman style breviary, like the Blessed Virgin Mary, the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary or the Roman breviary, I'll pray matins and louds. 
obviously don't pray matins with the monastic breviary. Um, but, um, I only pray the morning prayer, right? Louds, sometimes matins, vespers and compline. I don't pray the, I mean, if I have time or if I'm not doing anything and I got some extra time, I'm, yeah, obviously I'll dive in and do those, but it's not part of my daily prayer regimen. And that's fine. As a lay person, you know, I know some lay people who only pray louds and compline, right? So morning and night. I know some lay people who only pray louds because that's, they, they often have a different nighttime prayer regimen or something like that, that they like, and that's, and they don't want to give that up and they don't want to add too much. And I get that. So they'll only pray one canonical hour. That's cool. I mean, you know, as lay people, we have a lot of flexibility in that. And it's, it's more along the lines of what you can do, what you have the time to do, what, you know, it fits into your, your prayer routine. So, um, anyway, I, I want to look into these little card things here too, before we, these things, I'm not really sure what these are, but I'm excited to take a look. And I also want to dig into the, take a look at that book by uh, Father Hausman that he, that is included of how to, how to pray this breviary, see what we can glean from that. So these things come in some little plastic. Okay, so we have, yeah, that's pretty much what I thought. We've got a few little quick reference. They're like little reference sheets of, of prayers that you'll pray all the time. Um, here's an inventory psalm. The inventory psalm at Matins follows the following verses, which open the office. So you've got that as a little quick reference sheet so you don't have to flip around in the book quite so much. Um Prayers before and after reciting the divine office. Okay, that's that's handy dandy. I may actually want to um, uh, laminate some of these so that they stay in good condition. And of course, the size of these is perfect. They fit right inside the book. So um, that's essentially what they are for and how they are used. And I would suggest you keep them in the book because once you open up that plastic, these little things float around, might be kind of easy to lose. But I'm sure if you keep everything in that nice little book sleeve, probably be just fine. Um, an office of nine lessons. This must be for uh, Christmas tide or Christmas Eve, greater antiphons. You know, I'll figure out what all these different little reference cards are for and how they work and it'll take some time um oh and that's the other thing when you're when you're learning a new version of the divine office um it's just like anything else it takes time to learn how to do it you'll mess up sometimes you'll pray the wrong days antiphons or or something like that that's not a liturgical abuse a liturgical abuse is i know that i should be praying this prayer but i like this other prayer better so i'm going to insert it here so, so that, that would be a liturgical abuse but, you know, messing up a little bit while you're learning, you know, that, that's the way it goes. And give yourself a little patience. And when you screw up and you re you, you've been reading this antiphon and, and then you go, oh, wait, no, no. It's the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. I'm supposed to be reading this special antiphon. Don't just give up or don't get mad at yourself or whatever. And don't, you know, mea culpa, mea culpa. But, you know, just go back and read the right antiphon. God loves you a lot more than you think he does. I guarantee you. He's, <laughs> if God can forgive you for all of the sins you've committed and then you go to the confessional and God wipes away your sins, he'll forgive you when you get the Roman breviary wrong while you're learning. I guarantee you. Um, yeah, so these are these are pretty interesting. I learn a lot about these and how to use them. But for now, I'm going to keep them in the in this so that they don't get lost learning to pray the traditional breviary by father robert no bernard houseman sj that I, i'd love to find out if this bro, if this priest is still alive if he's still with us um how he gets along in the jesuits being a traditional latin mass priest it'd be an interesting 
conversation. <laughs> you want to do the show, Father Houseman, if you're still with us and you want to do the show, send me an email, tradmanpodcast at gmail.com. Okay, learning to pray the traditional breviary, short little pamphlet style book. Um, total pages here are, you know, uh, what, 110. And it's, you know, a lot of it is the, just pointing out the, the rubrics of the, of the office, how the seasonal changes work. Oh, this is kind of cool. They go through, he goes through hour by hour and just gives you a short little lesson on the canonical hours. Starts off, Louds is the second half of the first hour of the divine office. Inquire, it must always be said immediately after matins except on Christmas Day, but when the priest says his office alone, it may always be separated from matins. May, but doesn't have to. That's interesting. I didn't know that. And then it goes through what matins is. There's a whole introduction. Um, and it looks like I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you read this first because it will make navigating this uh, a lot easier. Um, there's going to be a little flipping around if you do it in book format. But if you do it on divinumofficium.com, I, I don't want the book to intimidate people who are new to this. And they look at that and they go, three volumes, flipping around, reference cards, Nah, I'm already I'm already confused. I'm already done. Thanks, but no thanks. That's not for me. That's just the book format. Let me show you guys something, and you're gonna love this. This is so cool. Um, I want to go to divinumofficium.com. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen here. Let me just guess, give me give me just a second to get situated here. Okay. Okay. Here we go present share screen so if you go to divinumofficium.com you will first be presented by this page they have a desktop version which is what i'll be using here a mobile version just in case you happen to be on your phone so you don't even need the computer to do this if you got a smartphone you can do it on your smartphone you go here and you get uh, the missile for the day, the traditional Latin mass missile. Um, and then the Ordo over here, this is a calendar. But you don't need that right now, okay? You don't need the calendar because this does it all for you. we we'll are go to the desktop version over here. Then you get to this page. And here down here, you see my cursor, you have Matins, Louds, Prime, Terse, Sext, uh, Non, Vespers, and Compline, okay? Uh, if you, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Down here, which version of the divine office do you want to pray? The Tridentine, the version of that, that was promulgated at the council of Trent. Uh, well, in the wake of the council of Trent, the, the version promulgated by his holiness, Pope St. Pius X, because Pope St. Pius X made some pretty radical changes to the Roman breviary. They were not popular at the time. So it's interesting that the Pius X Society is the uh, they're they're thought of as being liturgical purists, but Pius X himself actually made one of the biggest changes to the church's liturgy uh, at that time that anybody had ever seen. Long story, I digress. The Divino Afflitu, I don't know anything about that. The reduced 1955 rubrics, because you know that some pretty drastic changes were made to the liturgy in 1955. We know all about that. The 1960 rubrics and the 1960 new calendar rubrics which is what we got here okay there's also the, the breviary okay and the ordo predicatorum which is the dominican uh breviary okay there's also over here uh this hodie means today so you want so if i were going to go to here i'd click Hodie and I'd click English as the side language to appear. Um, there's also the Office of the Dead, Defunctorum means the dead, and then the Parvum Beata Maria Virginis, which is the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So it's all here in one website. Notice I haven't entered in any passwords. There's no paywalls. I've entered in no credit card info. This is all free. 
but they do rely on uh, donations. So if you are, if the spirit is moving you towards generosity, this is a great um, resource to donate some money to, to help out. So let's go to this 1960 new calendar. We'll select English as our side language. It will appear side by side with the Latin. Um, and then we'll do today's and let's just go to louds. Okay. Just for whatever. Click that. And now this is really simple. All you do, there's no flipping around in a book. There's nothing. You start from the top and you go to the bottom. And that's the whole office. You see this uh, this little symbol here, the little cross. This is Deus in Adjutorio Meum Intende. Anywhere you see that little cross means you make the sign of the cross while you're reading that Porsche. So Deus in Adjutorio Meum Intende, Domine ad adjuvanda me festina, Gloria Patria, Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Alleluia. That's the end. That's the the uh, the start. And then you just go down and you pray this antiphon. Then you pray the psalm. And then at the end of every antiphon, or at the, at the end of every psalm, you pray the glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And then you repeat the antiphon. Go down. There's, uh, I think, five or six psalms. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five psalms in louds. Then a short chapter. This one's from the book of Sirach. A hymn, which you do not have to sing the hymn. You can just say the hymn like a prayer. Um, and then there is a canticle. A canticle is a short reading from the New Testament. Um, and it's different for every single one of the hours. The Louds canticle is the canticle of Zechariah. Uh, and so you would, and so here, you know, you'd make the sign of the cross here, which you don't do when you read the other Psalms. You make the sign of the cross when you read the New Testament canticle, because it's part of the New Testament. So therefore, we'd make the sign of the cross as we would pray. Benedictus Dominus Deus Israel, quia visitavit et fecit redemptionem plebisue. You go down, there's a short collect. Domine exaudi ratzini meam et clamen mea sad teviniat. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come unto thee. When you pray this in community, though, if you were if you were to pray it in chapter, um, it is a little bit different. And I wonder if I can options. If I go to options, uh, let's see here. Hide numbers, white background. Now it's not. Um, Anyway, when you pray it in uh, let's see, Plutus. No, I guess that's not it. When you pray it in chapter, this Lord hear my prayer and let my cry come unto thee actually becomes the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Because there's more than one person there. Little things like that you learn as you go along. Um, and then there is a There's a little um, collect, you know, so you'd say, Domine exaudi ratzini mea meclanor mea sad tiviniat oremus. Deus qui nos biate, whoever, confessioris tui annue solenitate letificas concedi propitius ut cuius uh, natalicia colimus etiam actionis itiemur. Per Dominum nostrum, Jesum Christum, Filium Tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitati spiritus sancti, Deus per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. So you notice that that ending to that prayer is very similar to the colic you would hear at Holy Mass. And that makes sense. This is the, liturg this is the liturgy of the church, right? Um, so there we go. Um, Sometimes, like on a day like today, who I just have a fairy of Advent. I don't know why this thing wants to think I'm saying the office of a confessor, but um, 
Oh, because today is the feast of Saint Juan Diego. Okay, there we go. That's why. So we so right here when that that in is you you would say uh, Deus qui nos beate Juan Diego confessiones tui annun, annua solemnitate litificas. But anyway, this is really it's free, it's easy. You start at the top, you do it at the bottom. You can pray any of the hours you want, or you know, you don't have to buy the book. And again, I will include this link in the description. But I, I urge any of you who are seeking a participation in the church's official prayer to uh, use this resource, learn how to pray the hours. And if you can get you a copy of the Breviatum Romanum, um, more power to you. If you look at that and you say, yeah, that's too rich for my blood, at least for something that I don't know I'm going to spend that much time on. I get it. I totally get it. Makes sense. But I've been wanting one for a while, and I'm really glad I got it. Um, and I hope this um, this new uh, adventure in the Roman breviary is a fruitful one for me. And um, if you guys have any questions about the liturgy of the hours, we should get a we should get a priest to come on the show and do a show on the liturgical hours um, and the divine office. I think that would be a, that would be a really good episode. Um, that's all I got for you today. That's all that came in, in here. I'm going to dig into this explanation by uh, Father Houseman. I'm also going to look into Father Houseman. I wonder if he's still with us. And if he is, I wonder if we could get him on the show. I'll have to ask nicely, uh, you know, uh, one Jesuit educated guy to another. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all I got for today, everybody. And I hope you're all having a blessed advent. Um, we've got a couple of great shows coming up. Jason and I are going to check in on week three of advent, see how our advent is going. And then on Monday, we have got a live stream that we're doing, um, on the feast of our lady of Guadalupe, one of mine and Jason's probably our most favorite um, Marian devotion. At least it's my favorite Marian devotion. I think he might be a little more into Fatima than Our Lady Guadalupe. It doesn't matter. It's the same Blessed Virgin Mary, but it's uh, I'm definitely a Guadalupe. Um, I'm definitely a Guadalupe enthusiast, always have been. So it should be a great show. Um, I hope you all are having a great Advent. God be with you all. And remember, life is hard, but it's harder when you don't pray the breviary. No, I'm kidding. It's harder when you don't pray the rosary, but pray the breviary. Pray, pray, pray in order a, um, an approved version of the divine office. I think you will get a lot out of it. Uh, and that's all I got for today, everybody. Thanks very much for joining me and God be with you. Mm -hmm.